You hear the screeching of an owl, you hear the wind begin to howl. You know there's zombies on the prowl. And it's terror time again. They've got you running through the night. It's terror time again. And you just might die of fright. It's a terrifying time. On today's episode of the Mod Guide, you can call me Tim the Toolman Taylor because I'm bringing you all the home improvement necessities that one can need for their home or base. Worried about the grid collapsing and your power failing? Then let's invest in solar. Are you tired of having to build entire staircases just to get up and down your buildings? Then let's invest in some ladders. All this and more shall be covered today, but first I'd like to ask your support on today's video with a like and subbing if you enjoy. I'd also like to thank today's artist Fox by for a lovely artwork. Now let's get to work renovating this shack, shall we? Are you worried about the power going out and you don't want to rely on fossil fuels that will eventually run out in your region? Or they're being heavily guarded by legions of the undead? Then let me introduce the immersive solar arrays mod by RadX5. This badass little mod adds solar panels and all the shit you need to support it from your very own solar array. To start however, you're going to have to locate the new advancements, Energy from the Sun magazine, if you want to be able to build the equipment. One thing I do like is this mod also encourages you to rely on the electrical skill more, maybe even being crazy enough to take electrician. As you require 3 levels of electrical to build the starting equipment for the rig, 5 if you want to make DIY battery banks from car batteries. Now the next thing you're going to need to do is find some solar panels. These can be found in warehouses, electronic stores, any place that it makes sense to find solar panels. You're also going to need an inverter which can be found in garages, warehouses, and other hardware style buildings. Once you have these two, gather up 6 electrical wires, 5 small metal sheets, 6 electronic scrap, and 4 metal bars. Now now we're ready to set up our first solar roof tiles and battery bank. Now then, let's place our roof tile up somewhere high and your battery bank can be set anywhere as long as it's nearby to the tiles. It can even be a level up or a level down from it. What if you can't get to the roof to place a panel? Well fret not, cause you could instead make a floor mounted solar panel. Using a solar panel, 4 screws, 4 bars, and 3 units of electrical wire. You don't want it in your walkway, then we can mount that bitch on a wall using the same ingredients as the floor mounted version. And you've got yourself a panel to slap on the side of walls. Once you have your bank, now all you need is batteries to put in them. Search warehouses and garages for these bad boys, and if you can't find enough to power your grid through the night, then once you hit level 5, electrical you'll also be able to craft large amp batteries and depending on what type that being standard sport or heavy duty you'll need 450 AH batteries 375 AH batteries or two 100 AH batteries respectively to craft a DIY battery bank once you have your batteries then just drag them into the battery bank just like it's a container and boom you've got your power sources sorted now keep in mind the big downside of solar is it's heavily reliant on the weather and environmental factors. If it's too rainy, cloudy, or it's just nighttime, it'll generate little to no power. In these cases, you'll have to hope that you built a large enough battery bank to support you until the sun picks up, or supplement your power source with a gasoline powered generator. Now don't fear however, you may worry about having a generator would waste the fuel, but with a handy dandy solar failsafe, you'll be able to make the generator only kick on when the battery bank runs out of power. And the next thing I'd like to note is that most issues you would encounter, like say the nearby power objects not recognizing a source, can be fixed using the reset battery bank right click option which when used will usually cause it to recognize your solar power. I do also enjoy the little visual touches, such as the fact that when you add more batteries to the bank, the bank stacks higher. And there's also a little visual gauge that fills up and drain as the power comes and goes. One final thing to mention is the fact that certain isolated buildings spawn with a solar panel already set up, such as the isolated cabin in the woods with a well, which just makes some of these bases even more appealing, as now you're getting a free boost to your solar array, which is a really nice thing. Overall, I really like the mod and I look forward to when it makes its multiplayer compatibility as well.
Are you tired of using sheet ropes to get up and down your base, but you don't quite got the carpentry you need to build an entire staircase, plus you prefer the zombies aren't able to get up and down your base as well? Then let me introduce the LADDERS mod by Ko. This mod, while incomplete, is partially functional and being worked on, and what is here is still good enough in my mind to show off. You know those warehouses with ladders on the side of them? Well now you can climb them to get away from the horde and get somewhere there they can't reach. And if you have level 3 or higher carpentry, you can pick them up and take off with them. Though there is a decent likelihood you will break them. Though this also goes down with each level of carpentry. If you don't want to break the ladder, then instead, for 6 planks, 4 sturdy sticks, 20 nails, 20 screws, and having a hammer, you could craft your own wooden ladder to climb up and down with. Keep in mind, as of right now, they act just like sheet ropes, but they don't have to be hung over something. Instead, they're set up from the bottom and scaled up and down. Now this does cause some glitchy and jankiness though, but the author does plan to expand and fine tune them. Such improvements will include having them be damaged over time through use, having zombies attack and damage them, adding better animations to them because currently they still only use sheet rope animations, climbing ladders will require you to expend endurance, and you won't even be able to climb them if you're overly exerted. Now one thing I personally would rather see is zombies knock the ladders over rather than break them. But overall it sounds like a good logical set of upcoming enhancements. And you could always set back up sheet ropes to get up and down once you've got a base built in case they they do break them. One other thing I'd personally like to see is the option to pull the ladder up behind you. Maybe keep the zombies from attacking it as well as denying other players access to your base, or if you want to have a hidden base in the upper level of a building like a church. Overall though, Ko, there's a lot of good potential here. Keep it up, dude. Are you the sort of mad bastard who run around town just to collect the exact perfect door you need to complement your home and base? If this is the case, then let me introduce Egon's All Doors Are Yours mod by Egon. Tis almost like his name's in the mod title or something. Now before we begin, I will say you do need to also install the Egon's Modding Utils mod, which will also be linked as many of his mods need these utilities that he builds his mods around. But with that one out of the way, this mod will let you with level 3 or higher carpentry rip any door you could find off its hinges with only a few exceptions. Either due to them being so rare that he didn't find and code them, or them being non-standard doors that they wouldn't fit frames right, like say outhouse doors. There's also going to be oddities such as if you steal church double doors, they'll attach to a door frame. But because you can't make the double door frame, it won't look quite right. Now to even take a door, you're going to need a screwdriver, a crowbar, and also to make sure the door has been unlocked. So no, you can't just steal the door to freely get into the building. You also have a chance to get 0-2 to two door hinges alongside the door. Once you have the door, you're gonna need to get it back home. Keep in mind while the door itself weighs 30 to 40 kilograms, you're not gonna be able to carry one in a vehicle that has less than 90 trunk capacity, such as a van or a truck, as a non-standard car trunk is just too small to fit a whole door. Once you've gotten home with the door, it's time to attach it. So once you've got the door, two door hinges and a space for it, just right click the door, hit install, and install it in the orientation that you need. Finally, my ugly wooden hut can have some stylish glass doors. Overall though, I enjoyed the mod and it worked nicely for what it does. Are you tired of your rain collector bears that you work so hard to set up just being completely useless in the winter? Or are you playing a challenge run such as using cryogenic winter and you're struggling to keep water up after the taps run dry and it's all snow all the time? Well thanks to Buhori, we've got the snow is water mod. There is two variants of this mod and one's a beta build that adds some potentially buggy functionality to the game, but for now, let's discuss what they both do. Basically, this mod causes snow to function like rain and slowly but surely will fill rain collector barrels. While they do fill water barrels at a slower rate due to it being slow, they will eventually fill up and you'll be left with a source of water just waiting to be plumbed into a sink or boiled away to get rid of its impurities. Now the beta version also makes it so other objects you place outside to collect water work again. Stuff like pots, pans, bowls, and more 
so you can stockpile the snow with other methods. This is pretty useful if you don't have rain collector barrels or you can't plumb them and you want to maintain a fresh stockpile in the house. Pretty good work mate if I do say so myself. Do you wish you could open and close your doors from a distance? Then let me introduce Stig's Remote Control Door Mod. This baby adds two receivers to the game which can be used to open and close doors with a remote controller. To make full use of this mod, you're gonna have to find four magazines. These are Electronics Volume 1 and 4 and both of the Engineering Magazines. Electronics is needed to craft a remote controller and the crafted trigger. And the Engineer Mags Volume 1 and 2 unlock the ability to make the simple remote door controller receiver and the remote door controller receiver respectively. The main difference between the two is range. The simple one has a much shorter range even with a level 3 remote which has the most distance. While the regular one has roughly double the receiver distance. While it's not a hugely long range, this mod shines by the fact you can use it for say garages and you can open the garage door so you can pull your car in to unload without having to get out and run around to the inside of the base and do so manually. Now there is a few bugs that seem multiplayer focused, such as the fact that receivers despawn if they're placed down on the ground eventually. So it's safest to build a crate nearby to the door and place it inside the crate where it'll still be allowed to operate the door to receive the signal. Now to craft a simple remote receiver, you need to be level two electrical, as well as having two electric wire, seven scrap electronics, and a crafted trigger. For the better version, you're gonna need to be level five electrical and have 10 electric wire, 25 scrap electronics, and a crafted trigger. Overall though, this mod is pretty cool and it's a nice little addition for any run for quality of life convenience. So overall, we've covered some nice little mods today, some big, some small, and all letting you do more with your base and home. Personally, my favorite is the Immersive Solar Panels mod. Anything that gives electrical more value is a good thing. And the ability to set up a new power grid that doesn't rely on gasoline at all is fantastic. Not to mention the fact that some buildings such as the isolated cabin I like the base in come with one solar panel to get you started, which is a very nice thing. Plus the ladders are pretty useful to getting places you weren't originally meant to easily, which opens up new options for bases and homes. I look forward to seeing that mod get more developed and fleshed out. Maybe add some metal ladders or some store-bought folding ladders. You know, give you some more options in the world rather than just creating them or ripping them off of buildings where you know them to be. Before we end this, there's one other mod I was going to take a look at on this video, but it started ending up being way too long. So I'm going to look at it in its own video. That's Soul Filter's Building Time. I hope you've enjoyed this video, however, and I immensely appreciate all the support y'all have given to me. Be sure to support today's artist. I'd like to once again personally thank all the members of the channel. Y'all's support is immensely appreciated and helps me to keep bringing you more content weekly. This has been Core, and I'll see you next time.